something stinky. Ooh, what's that smell? That's funky. What is that? Oh, that's stinky. Oh, who is that? Oh, gosh. Well, you're here today with Sterling Sydney Studios. I want to thank you for joining us. In all seriousness, I want to talk about uh, years ago I had this apartment. I was working on the pipeline. It was a temporary lease and I was moving in and started to notice that there was just this funky smell, just rank and rotten. And the more I got moved in and settled in, I started to realize by one of the windows there was just there was flies, crazy flies. I mean, literally thousands without exaggeration. And it turned out that they had fumigated the building or fumigated the room uh, before the new tenant, which was me, moved in. And there was a rodent or something in the walls that had died. And then, lo and behold, uh, the next day, uh, the apartment above me, toilet overflowed and soiled all the carpet throughout the apartment. And this dwelling place, this lodge of living was so foul and so rank. I, I couldn't sleep in there. I sure couldn't eat in there. It was one of the most god-awful experiences. And we've all experienced through our lives some funky, foul, just nasty smell, whether it's a dead carcass, uh, nasty garbage that uh, needed to be taken out, uh, old baby diapers, uh, whatever the case may be. And so today we want to think about and reflect, how does uh, the dwelling space of our life smell? What is the aroma of the house of our lives? Well, obviously you can see here I'm sketching some noses and I'm working on a, a master class that I do through Watts Atelier. And so we're going to take that image and just uh, reflect and talk about uh, what we can learn uh, through that image throughout the Bible. Now, when we refer to the nose, we're speaking of the organ of breathing. Um, it is receptacle of the breath of God. Now, in the ancients, specifically the Hebrews, they regarded the nose as containing the breath of life rather than as we think of today as the lungs. An obvious example of this is Genesis chapter 2, where God breathes into Adam's nostrils and he says that he's become a living being. Uh, in older translations will say he became a living soul. Throughout scripture there's a plethora of ways in which nose is used as an image, um, but we're not going to go through all of them. Uh, we're going to focus on a particular one, but I mean, just for example, it talks about the ring and the nose as a sign of subjection, because which a slave could lead them by pulling the ring. Um, it can be used in the nose to, as adornment, as we see in Proverbs. It's used many different ways, um, but today we're going to uh, focus on, on the, the good and bad aspects in relation to um, how God has a spiritual perception through smell. Starting with the bad, uh, we see in uh, books like Job uh, that the nose is an organ of anger in the body. Um, it speaks of his nostrils. From his nostrils comes smoke. Um, if you remember uh, cartoons from our childhood, like the old classic cartoons, when a character would get angry, their face would get red, and they'd huff and puff, and smoke might come out of their nose. It's an old image of, of anger, and it's. We, that picture is painted of God throughout scripture. And continuing with this image, um, you have snorting. So basically, you know, your muscles tense up, your body movements become swift and forceful, and you snort. Um, and it, in Job, it also speaks of his majestic snorting is terrible. Um, that's the awfulness of God that's depicted. Um, it can also be reference to passion, um, the idea of huffing and puffing through the nose. Uh, just as a side note, also on the negative idea of this image, is that uh, of a man or woman who sees no need in God, there is the idea of the elevation of the nose, which indicates pride. It's seen in Psalm uh, 10. Um, it's basically they're lifting their face a little higher than their surroundings that they despise. If a man or woman sees no need in God, their prideful heart, the nose is lifted up. And before we transition to the good side of the image, uh, the most common word used in Hebrew for wrath or anger is the same word used uh, for nose, uh, which is very interesting. And now, uh, as we transition into the, the good side of the image of nose, 
Um, there's this idea of a Hebrew idiom, this very lovely idiom, of long suffering and slow to anger is literally translated as long nose in Hebrew. Where today we would think of Pinocchio, a long nose, you know, refers to a liar, but in biblical uh, concept, biblical imagery, on the long nose of God shows his enduring patience. Let us now turn the page to our main focus of how we want to view this image, and that is throughout the Bible, it doesn't really say anything particular about God's nose, but it says a whole lot about what he likes and he enjoys to smell. Uh, whether it's Genesis 8, 21, Exodus 29, Leviticus 1, 9, uh, Numbers 15, Ezra 6, Psalm 141, Ephesians 5, Philippians 4, Revelation 5. There is this idea that there is a sweet aroma that the Lord enjoys breathing in. And it is uh, the sacrifice, the worship, and the prayer of the saints. Ephesians 5 uh, perfectly illustrates this where it says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love just as Christ also loved you, and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. The basic idea of this teaching uh, from Jesus' revelation is the concept that our worship, our sacrifice, our giving of tithes and offerings, our prayer, is like a sweet aroma that rises to the heavens and gives God's pleasure as he breathes it in, as he smells it. So this is a, a physical down-to-earth illustration that God has given us to illustrate his divine pleasure in the acts that we, that we do. So the way you worship, the way you serve, the way you act can move God. It can please God. For it is written, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. So we're here to encourage you to live your life, offer your life a sacrifice to God. May your life be a sweet aroma to the Lord. We would like to challenge you to perform a spiritual hygiene check on your life. And our prayer stands firm for you that your worship would be pleasing, that your prayer would be soothing, that your offering would move the Lord, that it would rise to the heavens and that his nostrils would take in and breathe the life of the sacrifice of your love poured out. We love you, my friends, and shine on. Shine on.